The Yukon Party says small businesses in the territory are struggling. Leader Curry Dixon points to a letter from the Yukon Chamber of Commerce that warns of significant job loss in the food and beverage industry. Premier Raj Pillay countered that the letter's concerns never materialized. But I want to say to the House today, I've also had a number of businesses call me that are in the same business and they're incredibly uncomfortable with this. They feel that some of the uh, businesses um, that are new overextended themselves. Um, they're eroding some of the other longtime businesses and their success um, by trying to um, really reduce the price of alcohol. So just today, I want to say, before we see it, um, there's a number of businesses that are um, not in line with the position of the Yukon Party or um, a position I believe that's uh, that's on its way. Premier Raj Pillay did admit the economy is looking tender heading into the fall. Then at the end of the day uh, yesterday, we got the 2023-2024 uh, financial Marcus statement. Continue. It's forecasting a swing from a $48 million surplus that was predicted to a $42 million deficit, a $90 million difference. The Yukon Party has already been accusing the government of overspending, so I'm sure we'll be hearing lots more about that. There was also a lot of chatter this week about health care. In a surprising twist, the NDP and Yukon Party were united, calling for limits on private involvement in health care. NDP leader Kate White cited Canada-wide challenges with private-public partnerships, such as the recent Auditor General report into Stanton Hospital in Yellowknife. Government, meanwhile, says it wants to keep the door open to allow for partnerships with First Nations development corporations. The parties also came to metaphorical blows over health care funding. The Liberals say they stand by their record, pointing to the new facility in Old Crow, upgraded emergency services at Whitehorse General, and the $30 million mental wellness unit that is nearly completed. The Yukon Party paints a very different picture. Health critic Brad Cathers says healthcare professionals' calls for more beds and more surgical infrastructure at Whitehorse General Hospital have fallen on deaf ears. In Yukon Hospital's 2018 plan to add more OR capacity and more beds at the Whitehorse Hospital, the Liberal government chose not to invest in needed hospital infrastructure. This Liberal government sat on the plan for expanding the hospital for over six and a half years. The current health crisis is the result of years of Liberal neglect. Now the Premier wants to use it as an excuse for privatization of our hospitals. There's no question that there is a desperate need for health care infrastructure. The question is whether that delay has been caused by neglect, as the Yukon Party accuses, or by the global pandemic, as the Liberals allege. Callie McTavish, CBC News, Whitehorse.